Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at explaining Poker Yoke. We'll look at some examples and show you a process so you can create your own. So what is a Poker Yoke? Well, have you ever put a new SIM card into your cell phone? Well, if so, you may have noticed that the SIM card holder and the SIM card itself are designed in such a way as to ensure there is only one right way for the card to fit. Now, this is a poker yoke, and it is pronounced poker yoke, by the way. So, a poker yoke is the Japanese name for a mechanism that prevents a user from a process of making an inadvertent mistake. Now, poker yoke literally translates as mistake proofing. And the logic behind a poker yoke is that if we don't make a mistake in the first place, then we don't have to spend time and money fixing that mistake. Now, we'll look at more examples of poker yoke shortly, but for now, let's explore what they are in a little bit more detail. So broadly speaking, poker yoke fall into two distinct types. First, we have control poker yoke, and these prevent a mistake from being made before it happens, and in doing so, eliminate the mistake. And secondly, we have a warning poker yoke, and these alert the operator a mistake is being made, so immediate, immediate action can be taken to avoid it. Now, each of those two types of poker yoke can be implemented using one of three methods. So the first is the contact method, and the contact method of poker yoke identifies mistakes by testing the physical attributes of an object. So for example, its shape, size, color, or weight. The next is the constant number method. And this type of poker yoke works for an activity that is repeated many times. Now this type of poker yoke alerts the operator if the wrong number of moves has been made in a process. And finally, we have the sequence method. And this type of poker yoke determines whether the appropriate sequence of steps has been followed. So let's look at some examples of each of these. So the first example we're going to look at is the contact method of implementing a control poker yoke. So imagine a machine that could be activated with one hand and that would leave one hand free. Well, in certain circumstances, this could be dangerous. So many machines are designed such that they can only activate it if you use both hands to start them. Next, we take a look at the contact method of implementing a warning poker yoke. So in this case, think about a factory that makes tens of thousands of cakes every day. And before each cake is placed in the oven, they are weighed. So each cake is expected to be, be a very specific weight or within a few grams of that weight. And if it isn't, then something has gone wrong. And a high number obviously means that perhaps there's too many ingredients in the cake and a low number, number means the opposite, that there's too few ingredients. Next, we take a look at the constant number method of a control poker yoke. So in this case, we could have medicine that is pre-dosed in daily sachets rather than requiring the user to measure from a larger container, potentially making mistakes. And next, we look at the constant number method for a warning poker yoke. So imagine a tray with 100 spaces which fit 100 test tubes. So if all the spaces in the tray are filled, it's very easy to, to see that the tray is complete, the tray is full. Next, we look at the sequence method of a control poker yoke. So when ordering goods online, it is mandatory that you fill in all the required fields. You cannot proceed to the next page of your order unless you fill in all those mandatory fields. And finally, we look at the sequence method of a warning poker yoke. So when you start the ignition of your car, if you haven't fastened your seatbelt, then you'll hear a warning beeping sound. And the warning only really stops when you fasten your seatbelt. And what that does is it helps ensure you don't accidentally drive off without fastening your seatbelt. Of course, you can drive off without fastening your seatbelt if you want to. It's just a warning. It's not stopping your car from driving. So how do you develop a poker yoke? Well, they can often be low cost and easy to implement. 
And for a company that manufactures thousands or more items, then making a simple investment in creating a Poker Yoke can often result in savings many times the cost of implementing that Poker Yoke. So this is a series of steps you can follow to create your own. So the first is to identify the root cause. Um, and you will most likely become aware you need a Poker Yoke because there's a frequent error or mistake that is occurring. And the way to get to the bottom of what the root cause of that error is, is to use something like the five whys technique to get to the bottom or the root cause of the problem. Next, it's a good idea to outline the full process that you currently follow. So create a step-by-step -step outline of the current process. And that's just to help you understand the context behind why the mistakes are occurring or the mistake is occurring. Step three is to identify your options to remove the mistake using a control poker yoke. Now, if you can't figure out how to prevent the error, then maybe you can detect the error quickly using a warning poker yoke. So look at using the contact, constant number and sequence method for each type of poker yoke. Step four is about choosing the poker yoke. Choose the best mechanism that's going to work for your circumstances. Step five is about testing the poker yoke you've created. And finally, if you're going to, if, if the test is successful and you want to take it to the next step, you need to train people in your team who need to operate the new process with the poker yoke. So let's bring that together with a simple example of developing a poker yoke from scratch. Now imagine you have a small garage at home and each day you find it a bit of a hassle to maneuver your car into the garage without scratching your paintwork. Now you could design a poker yoke to help so you don't risk scratching the car ever again. And one thing to remember here is that we're looking for a low cost solution. So step one is to identify the root cause. Now, when parking the car, you know that the hardest part is to judge when to stop the vehicle so it doesn't hit your garage wall. Um, you know it's always a tight fit, but every now and again, the front of the car touches the garage wall and that you know makes a small scratch on the car bumper. So by asking yourself why the problem happens, you can understand the situation and find a way for it to never occur again. And in this case, you can't see the bumper of your car, so you can't really work out how close to the garage wall it is. Step two is to outline the full process. Well, that looks something like this. Firstly, you drive home, you arrive in the driveway, you stop the car and open the garage door. Then you drive the car into the garage close enough to the wall so that the garage door can close behind you. But you basically have to guess that the car is in the right position. So the next step is to identify your options. Well, some ideas that could help include having a friend help you park. You could place a mirror in the garage so you can see the, the front of the car, or you could use some kind of audio sensor to detect the car's position. Now, you don't want to hit the wall ever. You don't need to know that you have hit the wall. So what you really want to do is use a control poker yoke so that you can be sure it never happens again. And the way you can do that is to place something possibly on the floor out from the wall and uh, knowing that if you hit that, you will have parked the car correctly without obviously hitting the wall. So step four is to choose your poker yoke. So you obviously choose to mount a barrier on the floor that the car tires can touch when the car is in the correct location. So note that this is a control poker yoke implemented using the contact method. And finally, you decide to test out your new poker yoke. So you drive the car into the garage to the point you can feel the tires touch the barrier and you know from now on you don't ever need to worry about your car hitting the wall again. And step six is to train others. Now, in this case, it doesn't really apply, but if you do have others who drive the car, you can show them how to park it in the garage. So finally, let's take a look at some advantages and disadvantages of Poké Yoké. Now, in terms of advantages, 
Preventing errors or detecting them early can obviously reduce costs, particularly if you're producing thousands or tens of thousands or even millions of components per day. Secondly, implementing a Poke Yoke doesn't need to be expensive. And finally, they can help you avoid or minimize human mistakes. Now, some disadvantages of Poke Yoke include a poorly design, designed Poke Yoke mechanism can demonstrate benefits but you might later discover that it doesn't work 100% of the time. Now, as humans, we like to find shortcuts or easy ways of doing things. So sometimes a poke yoke that can appear useful actually ends up resulting in unintended consequences. So a good example of this is a spelling and grammar checker, and that removes the need for people to actively improve their communication skills. And that could show up as a negative in other situations in the workplace. And finally, you know, the aim in lean manufacturing is to minimize waste while retaining or improving productivity. So you need to just be a little bit careful that the introduction of the Poke Yoke in the process, process does not reduce efficiency or slow things down. So in summary, as humans do make errors from time to time, it's useful to have a tool that prevents frequent occurrences of a mistake happening over and over. So using a Poke Yoke, you can change a process to ensure that the error never happens again, or at the least it's caught as soon as it happens or very early. So next time you consider the way a process could be improved, either at home or in the workplace, consider ways you might go about introducing a Poke Yoke. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.